Hey guys, uh, the great folks over at Firefly Electronics sent me over some new gear to play around with. I don't know if you remember Firefly Electronics from the past, uh, but I did a video on a smart doorbell sensor. Uh, it was one of the first products they came out with, which basically turned your dumb doorbell into a uh, smart doorbell, uh, notifying you whenever the button was pressed. Uh, it was pretty cool. I'll have a link up in the uh, top corner there if you want to check out that video. Otherwise, let's stick around and check out the new gear that they have to offer, the smart Wi-Fi temperature sensor. Here we go. All right, so as you can see here, you can get it for about 20 bucks, which is not that bad for a decent uh, temperature sensor, which you can integrate directly into Home Assistant. The specs on this looks like it will need a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so you'll definitely need 2.4 gigahertz on your home network. Also, it uses just a regular uh, phone power charger brick, so any uh, little USB power brick that will handle 5 volts will get you going. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So of course for starters, we'll start by unboxing the device. Uh, once we do that, uh, then we're going to install and configure the device. Once we have it all set up the way we want it, then we're going to get it added into Home Assistant. And lastly, we'll kind of see what that looks like in action. So let's get started. All right, uh, so as you can see here, it's in their uh, normal green color that they normally use for all of their stuff. Uh, open up this box here. There's not a whole lot in here, really. There's another small box inside. Uh, let's go ahead and open that up. Looks like the only thing that's really in here is a USB thumb drive, which I'm assuming is the temperature sensor, uh, a cool sticker that I can use with the Firefly logo on it, and then, of course, uh, a little card that says thank you with links to the instructions on how to get this set up. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so uh, the main issue that I have with this device, which isn't very much, is that uh, it didn't come with any kind of USB power brick. Now that's okay, uh, I have tons of these laying around, but if you notice the way this design is set up, if you were to use one of these uh, like iPhone power chargers or something like that, it's going to stick out really far from your wall, and uh, depending on where you install it, you may end up breaking it. So we don't want that to happen. So you're going to want, more than likely, some sort of L or elbow uh, style power brick, which will have the USB coming out the bottom, as you can see here. I wish they would have included that in the uh, box itself, or maybe at least, if nothing else, a pigtail uh, USB extension that you could use where it wouldn't cause the device to stick out of the wall so far. Other than that, so far, so good. So I've decided to install this in my laundry room so I can kind of track the temperature, especially as we're running the washer or dryer quite a bit. I'm curious to see how hot it actually gets in that room. This will be a great way to figure that out. Now that we have it installed on the wall, uh, let's pull out our phone and we should be able to find the ad hoc network connection that it creates uh, for you to finish up the configuration. As you can see here, there it is, Firefly with like the serial number listed after it. Uh, that's the one that you want to connect to. And based on the instructions, once it fully connects, it should pull up with a splash screen that will allow us to uh, add it to our Wi-Fi network. And here it is. Let's go ahead and put in our Wi-Fi network credentials for that SSID. Just a reminder, it does have to be 2.4 gigahertz. So if it's not connecting to your Wi-Fi network, make sure that you have 2.4 gigahertz enabled. Once you've entered in your Wi-Fi credentials, you're ready to move on to that next step. Now, as far as configuration goes, there wasn't much to it, but now we're ready to get it added into Home Assistant. Now, based on the instructions, as you can see here, it should automatically be discovered by Home Assistant. 
uh, under the notification section. Now for me, unfortunately, mine doesn't show up yet. It's quite possible that I just didn't wait long enough. Uh, I'm pretty impatient, so who knows. But I did see in the instructions that it comes in as an ESPN home device. So let's just go over to integrations and try to add it that way. So we'll go into integrations. So we're going to do a search for ESP home. And then it asks for the IP address of the device. Now I looked this up earlier, uh, so you'll need to do this on your own if you have to set it up this way. So we'll put that in there. And as you can see, it automatically came up. Perfect. Let's go ahead and move on to the last step. See it in action. All right, so basically let's click on the device. Unfortunately, it came up with that generic Firefly name. But we can go into settings and change that. So I'm going to give it a new name here. Laundry Room Temperature Sensor. Should be good. And we'll go ahead and say to uh, save that to all the uh, aspects of this device. And then, of course, now everything shows laundry room temperature sensor. So we are good to go. If we click on that, you can see it's already reporting the temperature. So that's pretty much it, guys. This thing was super easy to set up. I had it done in 15 minutes. Probably would have had it done in less uh, if I wasn't also making a video at the same time. But again, that's the end of the video, guys. Another great product from Firefly Electronics. Uh, now, obviously, I haven't ran with it for too long as of yet, uh, but so far, so good. And uh, I don't anticipate any uh, problems in the foreseeable future. So definitely worth the 20 bucks. I think, like I said, the only downside to the whole device was that they didn't include a, uh, a USB power brick or a USB pigtail so that I didn't have to go searching for a power brick that had the USB uh, coming out the side. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So again, uh, for starters, we started by unboxing the device. Uh, once we did that, we installed and configured it. Uh, once that was done, we uh, got it added into Home Assistant. And lastly, I showed you what that looked like in action. Again, if you haven't had a chance, jump over to Firefly Electronics and see what other devices they have to offer. Looks like they have some new stuff coming down the way, so it should be out before too long. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, jump over to my Teespring uh, merchandise page and check out all the Burns Home Automation merchandise. As always, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.